Hello everyone, welcome to this video all about arithmetic operations. Today we'll be focusing on a type of question labeled determining unknowns. So, we're going to begin by reading a short summary of what we should expect from a determining unknown question and how to deal with them. A question that requires determining unknowns usually involves arithmetic operations with one value unknown. This does not necessarily have to be the result of the arithmetic operation. For example, the unknown in the following multiplication is one of the factors. 3 times unknown equals 18. So you might be asking, why might this be important? Why do we need to find unknowns? You might have already dabbled in question like this, but this is a basic foundation in learning about algebra. In any question, that involves you trying to find missing information or, or maybe you could say an unknown, then you might be doing a finding unknowns or algebraic question. These kinds of questions usually involves assigning a random word or letter to the missing value. In this case, um, they literally called it unknown and then switching around the numbers so that you can isolate the unknown value on one side whilst also keeping in mind that the equation has to be balanced. Balance is a key word here. This might be a little bit confusing as I just dumped a bunch of information so let me just show you visually in the quick example they gave us. So three times unknown. This is an equation. Usually instead of unknown, we usually use a shorter name for it. So let's do that as a practice. Let's call unknown x. So if we replace unknown with x, we get 3 times x equals 18. When we're switching around values, we're not actually switching them around. It may appear that way, but let me show you what is actually happening. So when we are switching around values, basically we're doing something on one side and then doing something on the other side. So we need to get rid of the times 3. Instead of just getting rid of times 3, we have to do the opposite effect so that the times 3 disappears. So, in this case, we would divide by 3, so the times 3 gets completely annihilated by the divide. Because 3 divided by 3 is 0. Now back to the balancing thing. When we do something on one side, we have to do it on the other side. So since we divide by 3 on the left, we have to divide by 3 on the right too. So now let's simplify all this. Since 3 times divided by 3 is 0, we just get x equals, and then we get 18 divided by 3. Now we just need to figure out what 18 divided by 3 is, and we know that's 6. So there will be x equals 18 divided by 3, which equals 6. So the answer will be 6. This is the basic actions we need to take to finding an unknowns question. If you can grasp this technique of sort of doing the opposite effect so we can isolate the x and then doing what we did on this side to what we did on that side and then just solving it using maths, then you can solve most simple algebraic question. So let's try this on the following example question they gave us. Jake started with a number, then multiplied it by 6 and added 2. He ended up with 146. He then realized he was supposed to divide the original number by 6, then subtract 2. What answer should he have gotten? What we need to do first in a word equation like this is that we need to make it an equation like we were doing before. Since this is an unknowns question, we need to figure out what the missing value is. In this case, there are two missing values. It's the original number and the number he should have gotten. So let's write this out as a number equation. We will use, once again, x to symbolize Jake's 
missing number. So in this word equation, we know that Jake's missing number is x. Then he multiplied it by 6 and added 2. And once he did that, he got 146. So we already have an equation. But there is a second one. What is the second one? Well, he realized that he was supposed to divide the original number by 6 and then subtract 2. What answer should we have gotten? So in order to do and figure out the question mark, we need to first solve the first equation. And the first equation is what we've been doing beforehand, solving an unknowns and switching them around. So let's solve what x is. Firstly, like we learned, we need to isolate the x. In order to do this, we can firstly get rid of the plus 2 by minusing 2, because plus is the opposite of minus. And since we're doing minus 2 on one side, we need to minus 2 on the other. So then we get x times 6 plus 2 and minus 2 is 0. And 146 minus 2, which equals 144. Now we need to get rid of the times 6. In order to do this, once again, we divide by 6. And then we have to divide by 6 on the other side. So now times 6 divided by 6 is 0. So we just get x. And that equals 144 divided by 6. Let me separate this so it's a little bit easier to see. Which equals, let's solve 144 divided by 6. That's 2, 12, 14 minus 12 is 2, and then we bring down the 4. And 24 divided by 6 is 4. So we get 24. So now we know x equals 24. All we need to do now is insert the 24 into the x in the second equation. So instead of x, now we know what x is. So we can go 24 divided by 6 minus 2 equals what? If we do bod mass, which means divide goes first, we just divide 24 divided by 6, which we know is 4. And then we minus 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. And now we have the answer. So the answer Jake should have gotten is 2, which is option A. To summarize, when we are finding a determining unknowns question, there are four simple steps we need to follow. Number one, make an equation if needed and assign the missing value a letter like we did in the example we just did. Step two, isolate the unknown value, which needs to be completely alone on one side, like here. Number three, balance what we did on the left, the right. Like since we minus two on the left T, now we can minus two on the right. And number four, to solve it. So, I hope this helped guys and I hope that it will be a lot easier solving these kinds of questions in the future. Thank you so much for listening and bye!